Hello and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos. I know it's been a long time since I last uploaded, I'm really sorry, life got very busy. Hopefully I can start posting videos much more regularly. I do sound a bit ill, I'm very sorry. I've tried to cut out as much of the coughing as I can, but it just comes with the time of year I'm afraid. Today's video is slightly different because it's not about a specific competition, but instead it's about the ISU Skating Awards and the disturbing trend of nominees and winners for the Best Coach category. So just some backstory, uh, in case you didn't know, the ISU Skating Awards, uh, this thing that the International Skating Union came up with, apparently to recognise outstanding achievements in figure skating, and there's quite a few different categories that they offer awards for, like Best Coach, Best Choreographer, Best Newcomer, Most Entertaining Programme, and Most Valuable Skater and Best Costume. There's also a Lifetime Achievement Award and a Special Achievement Award, with the Lifetime one being won by people like Kurt Browning, the first person to land a quadruple jump, Jane Torval and Christopher Dean, the first skaters to get straight sixes back in the old 6.0 era, and the special award to Ilya Malinin last season after he was the first person to land a quadruple axel. However, the category that I want to focus on for this video is the best coach category, and the slightly disturbing trend that is seen in some of the nominees and winners. So going back to the very first ISU Awards in 2020, the nominees for Best Coach were Eteri Tutberitze, Raphael Aratunian and Brian Orsa, with Eteri winning. This is highly problematic. People who have watched figure skating for a while, or even since the Beijing Winter Olympics in 2022, will know that Eteri Tutberitze has a history of um, <laughs> not being nice to her students, let's put it like that, so I don't get flagged by YouTube. At the Beijing Winter Olympics, Camilla Valieva, who was 15 years old at the time, tested positive for a banned substance at the Russian National Championships just before, and Eteri pushed basically all of the responsibility onto Camilla and didn't let anyone think that she had responsibility even though it's very likely she did. Skaters who have left Eteri and either trained somewhere else or retired have been quite outspoken about how severe her training methods are. There are some who have developed eating disorders like Yulia Lipnitskaya, who went for tr um, treatment for her anorexia. There's also severe injuries like Evgenia Medvedeva, who cannot turn, uh, I think it's to the left enough anymore. She can't do jumps other than toe loops and salcos, I believe. Reigning Olympic champion Anna Shabakova has said that she was in the gym with multiple layers of clothing on, doing cardio to try and keep her weight down as a Terry wants. Just before the pre-Olympic Russian nationals, Elena Kostanaya fractured her wrist and a Terry thought that she should still skate with that injury, which is ridiculous. And it's not like this was information that wasn't known before Ateri won her award, even though a lot of the examples I have used are from the Olympic season. There were already examples before that were very publicly known. For example, Yulia Lipnitskaya had already retired by then. Evgenia Medvedeva had already moved to Canada and then was uh, open about some of the issues that she faced. And there were documentaries made about two Baritze girls, and I'll link some of them in the description as well. The issue is, even knowing all of this, the ISU still went and gave Eteri the Best Coach Award. Now, you could say this is because her students had won quite a lot consistently that season, but I just still don't think that's an excuse to praise abuse. Moving on to the nominees in 2020, Raphael Artunian, the coach of reigning Olympic champion Nathan Chen, has also had a few issues. Some lesser known issues with Raph are, for example, when he called Czech skater Eliska Brezhnova, quote, a fat cow, end quote, 
and told her, quote, pigs can't fly, end quote. This isn't as well known as a lot of the Eteri things, but it's still something to bring up. The most well-known issue in Raphael's training group is the 2019 World Championships incident between US skater Mariah Bell and Korean figure skater Eunsu Lim. If people want, I will make a more in-depth video about that incident, but the long and short of it is that during a training session, Mariah Bell caught the back of Unsu Lim's leg with her skate and caused her a little bit of an injury. This then turned into a whole big investigation and when asked about it, Raf was adoring towards Mariah and quite nasty towards Unsu, who at the time was a child. Raf also got quite sulky that people were asking him about this incident instead of congratulating him and everything on Nathan Chen's world title. Raphael has been coaching for a very long time, and so it's likely there's other things that he has done that I'm just not aware of because they may have happened before I was born. Moving on to the third nominee of Brian Orsa, I know a lot of people think that he is the most wonderful coach and has a perfect environment, but there he still has his problems. In 2010, he had quite a messy split with the then reigning Olympic champion um, Yuna Kim, who had won in Vancouver a few months earlier. And without her permission, he released her free skate music for the upcoming season. He and Yuna had a big sort of argument on Twitter, which was in its infancy at the time. And I like to think that both of them have moved on. Other than that, I don't know of any specific issues with Brian, but I'm always hesitant to glorify a coach in case a skater hears what I have to say and then feels they can't speak out against someone. The awards in 2021 were only for the Lifetime Achievement Awards and the 2022 awards were postponed, so I'm now going to move on to the 2023 awards. So the best coach in 2023 was Patrice Lauzon, and the other nominees were again Raphael Artunian and Stefan Lombiel. So Patrice is one part of the iconic Ice Academy of Montreal duo with Marie-France Dubreuil, and Ice Academy of Montreal has quite a few little scandals. I'm not sure scandals is the best word, but it's the one that I kind of feel best fits here. Beyond the coaches, Ice Academy of Montreal trains loads and loads of ice dance teams and so it has been questioned sort of is their monopoly and dominance good for the sport or does it create quite a dangerous situation where skaters have to go to them in order to place which gives uh, Patrice and Marie quite a lot of power. In terms of specific issues, Reigning Olympic champion Gabriela Papadakis had to have an abortion during the Olympic season, I believe, and her coaches knew and they weren't particularly supportive of her. They didn't particularly try and help her through that. They just sort of said, get back to training. Although I don't know any specific examples of poor coaching, I am aware of the coaches covering up for specific skaters most recently for Nikolai Sorensen. And although it's not a severe cover-up in the same way that, for example, uh, Morgan Seapress's coaches covered up for him, it's still not very good. And someone like that is not exactly the best coach, in my opinion. Additionally, I do worry that if there is a single monopoly regarding coaches for a specific discipline, in the same way that a Terry has a monopoly on women's skating, then it will allow them more flexibility and more ability to abuse skaters because they don't have a choice of where to go. I've already covered Raphael Artunian, so I'm going to discuss Stefan Lombiel now. So Stefan Lombiel is often seen as a very sort of handsome and fluffy and lovely coach in the fans' point of view, but actually that sort of image is quite damaging and Stefan is not as innocent as people like to make out that he is. 
the main coaching issue I can think of regarding Stefan Lombiel is when the Japanese skater Rika Kihira came to train with him during the pandemic and instead of giving her a more tailored routine or workout schedule, he gave her Shoma Uno's. And then Rika then went on to have injuries and things like that and couldn't skate in the Olympic season pretty much at all because of this horrendous training regime formed by both Stefan Lombiel and uh, May Hamada, who I will discuss later on. There are also questions about his living arrangements with Denis Vasiliev, the Latvian skater who was at the time a minor, but I don't know enough about that and so I don't want to discuss something and potentially spread harmful or false information. And so now we get to the 2024 nominees and the results will be announced on the 11th of February if you want to watch the awards, you don't have to. So the nominees this year are May Hamada, Stefan Lombiel and Sonoko Nakano. Apologies if I mispronounced any of them. I've already discussed Stefan Lombiel and I don't believe that there's anything relating to Sonoko Nakano that I should bring up or I haven't heard it. So if there is, please let me know. I think the big one to discuss nominated this season though is May Hamada. So May Hamada is a very well-known coach for Japanese ladies and in the past she has coached Satoko Miyahara and Rika Kihira and she currently coaches Mone Chiba and the junior Mao Shimada. Most of the evidence for the allegations against Hamada I'm going to be discussing come from the lawsuit that Nobunari Oda filed against her. Now I'm aware that Nobu lost this but I still want to discuss it because I think it's worth bringing up. So for those who don't know, back in 2020, I think, Nobunari Oda tried to initiate a legal battle against Mei Hamada for moral harassment and basically said he had to be fired from his job. And then he discussed some of the physical and verbal abuse that he'd seen from Hamada at the rinks towards her skaters. One example is that uh, Nobu said that he saw Hamada pull a female club member around by the ponytail after she'd repeatedly failed her jumps. And when Nobu approached the girl and he was concerned, she told him that she was used to it. Hamada has also been involved in overtraining methods with many people saying that they have seen her skaters When they go for practice sessions, they immediately start going for triples and triple triples rather than warming up slowly as if they're used to being pushed way too hard. And then Mal Shimada, the reigning junior world champion, is the only one doing quadruple jumps in the junior women's um, event and she is trained by Hamada. So many skaters, many skating fans, sorry, are worried. Remember, these claims against Hamada, these allegations, were all already known before she was nominated for Best Coach. I think my main reason for wanting to make this video was just to kind of highlight how abuse is perpetuated and rewarded in this sport, and how something really needs to be done, and that all will start from the ISU acknowledging that there's a problem, and actually punishing coaches who are abusive towards their skaters. As always, thank you so much for watching. My social media links are all in the description. They're all in my card. I also have a Redbubble store. If you would like to purchase any of my little designs, you're very welcome to. Thank you so much, and let me know what video you would like to see next.